Coming up on Hoosier Sports Night, the IU men's basketball team takes down a ranked opponent, continuing their winning streak. And the men's soccer team competed in the Big Ten Championship last Sunday, and we have the recap for you. Don't go anywhere, because this is Hoosier Sports Night. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Hoosier Sports Night. I'm Griffin Gonzalez, and beside me, the one, the only, Meredith Strewing. And Meredith, Thanksgiving break right around the corner, but Hoosier Athletics in full swing. Boy, it is. And we know we have everything from football to women's basketball. It's been an, an exciting week in Hoosier Athletics. And speaking of excitement, newcomers are already making a name for themselves on the IU men's basketball team. Reporter Dan Black tells us about the rookies that played a key role in the game against Marquette. In their first marquee matchup of the season, the Hoosiers played host to the number 24-ranked Marquette Golden Eagles in their Gavit tip-off games matchup Wednesday night. What was supposed to be a hard-fought back-and-forth battle was quite the opposite as Indiana down Marquette 96-73. to IU dominated their Big East foes in almost every facet of the game. The Hoosiers out-rebounded the Golden Eagles 35-29 while forcing 14 turnovers, seven of which off steals. This defensive execution has been something that Archie Miller has emphasized throughout the early part of the season, and Wednesday he was pleased with what he saw. But I thought our guys really kind of figured out that if we're going to get better on defense, you know, part of it's the pressure. Part of it's the ability to pressure the ball, keep the ball in front, and then we're a help-oriented team. You've got to be able to help. As important as defense is, offense is still the name of the game, and the Hoosiers found plenty of it tonight. They shot 64% from the field and 45% from beyond the arc. Much of this offense came from the tandem of Evan Fitzner and Romeo Langford. Langford finished with a season-high 22 points on 8 of 15 shooting while getting to the cup with a relative ease. Fitzner enjoyed his best game of the campaign, adding 16 points of his own on an outstanding 6 of 7 shooting while going 4 of 4 from beyond the arc. It was the breakout game Fitzner was looking for in his first major contest as a Hoosier. Yeah, I mean, it feels good when you got the crowd behind you. Um, so credit, credit to them. They were all excited. So um, guys, were, guys were finding me too. So uh, it's it really just my teammates finding me and, you know, knocking down the open shot. The Cleveland Crimson will now hit the road for the first time this season when they travel to Fayetteville and face off against the Arkansas Razorbacks on Sunday. And the Hoosiers will look to add even more wins to their 3-0 record. Now on to men's soccer where the Cream and Crimson walked away on Sunday with their 13th Big Ten title. And our crew was down there to soak it all up. Maya Engel is our beat reporter for men's soccer. Maya, take it away. One more to go. This was the scene on Sunday afternoon after the Hoosiers collected their 13th Big Ten tournament title in program history against the defending champs, the Michigan Wolverines. In just the seventh minute, Trevor Swartz ripped a nice shot from midfield that was deflected by goalkeeper Henry Mashburn. Then Griffin Dorsey got the rebound, and his shot was deflected by Mashburn as well, but this time Corey Thomas was in the right place at the right time to tap the ball in. Definitely nice to get that first goal for a team that has a defensive shape like we do. So hard to score on us. When we get that first one, you almost think the game's over. Jeremiah Gutyard did take advantage of a perfect Griffin Dorsey cross and scored his first goal of the season off of a header. The Hoosiers went up 2-0, but this score didn't last very long. Just two minutes after Gutyard's header goal, Austin Panshot found Spencer Glass making a nice run and beating his defender to score the final goal of the game. The Hoosiers collected their second title of the season here at Grand Park to become the 2018 Big Ten Tournament champions. Coach Yegley and his team are already looking forward to the NCAA tournament, but Coach wants his team to slow down and enjoy this moment. I talk to them about it often, like you gotta get, you gotta enjoy the moments you're in and realize the journey is a big part of it. It's not just the end goal and what they're doing um, 
is pretty special, and yet they're not they're not content. I mean, that's just not how this group's. You want the next. That's just what competitors do, and I don't need to to remind them of that. I have to kind of remind them to enjoy it and, and, and realize what they're doing. Now, this is the first time the Hoosiers have won both the regular season title and the tournament title since 2006. Indiana was ranked the number two seed overall in the NCAA tournament for the second year in a row, and the quest for nine will continue next Sunday in the second round of the tournament, where IU will play the winner of the UConn-Rhode Island match. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Maya Engel. That UConn match went down earlier this afternoon, and they will face off against UConn at the NCAA tournament this Sunday at noon. With the new year upon us, IU Athletics can expect some changes to be made, starting with women's field hockey head coach Amanda Janney Misselhorn. Janney Misselhorn has decided to step down, according to a statement released by IU Athletics. In her statement, she said, I am grateful for the opportunities that I have been given in the Big Ten. It has been a privilege to mentor and coach our athletes. After coaching for 20 years, I need to focus on my family and my health. At this time, it is best for me and best for the program that I step down. In her first season at Indiana, Janie Misselhorn led the Hoosiers to a winning conference record for the first time since 2009. But the strong start didn't hold up as IU's win total has lowered every year since then. Janie Misselhorn concluded her fourth and final season with IU field hockey in late October with an overtime loss in the first round of the Big Ten tournament. In her four years in Bloomington, the Hoosiers compiled a 27 and 48 record. A search for a new head coach is currently underway. In the meantime, assistant coach Nicole Volgraf will act as interim head coach. Well, the women's basketball team didn't hit the court this week, but they had four big wins off of it. As head coach, Terry Moore picked up her top recruiting class since becoming the head coach here at Indiana. Morin picked up two five stars, Jory Allen and Mackenzie Holmes, as well as two three stars, Ariel Wisney from Colorado and Shalia Beeler out of the 2018 state champion Warren Central in Indianapolis. These ladies pushed the Hoosiers to a top 20 recruiting class for 2019 with a lot of excitement to come. So be sure to look out for these Hoosiers as they make a big splash in the hall next season. Both the men's and women's cross country teams are NCAA champions championships bound due to their performances at the Great Lakes Regional. Both teams finished in fifth place in the regional, earning themselves a top seed for the championships. For the women, senior Maggie Allen led the charge with an eighth place finish, while junior Kyle Mao earned IU's top spot on the men's team with a fourth place finish. Other notable Hoosier performances for IU include Catherine Receiver and Dustin Horder finishing in 19th place in the women's and men's races respectively. This is the first time that both teams have made it to the championships since 2013. The meet will be held at the University of Wisconsin on Sunday with the women's 6K race slated to begin at 11.45 a.m. and the men's 10K race to follow at 12.45 p.m. Hey, when Hoosier Sports Night continues, Hoosiers travel north to beautiful Ann Arbor to face off against the Wolverines. Joe Canna will be telling us what to expect in that one. And meet the new head coach who wants to put the IU wrestling team on the map. You are watching Hoosier Sports Night. This season, Hoosiers welcome in a new wrestling coach. However, he's no stranger to the Bloomington area. IUS TV reporter Michael Toka introduces us to Angel Escobedo. When it comes to Hoosier athletics, what's the first thing that comes to mind? The answer you had probably isn't wrestling, but one man is looking to change just that. When we go out there and compete, have that Indiana across the chest, and you know what these guys are able to do with the program, I'm excited. I'm excited, you know, as alumni. I'm excited uh, just as a coach to see these guys really bring Indiana wrestling into where it should be. Meet the new head coach of the Indiana wrestling team, Angel Escobedo. The 31-year-old takes over a program this season that hasn't seen a new head coach in decades as his predecessor, Dwayne Goldman, sat at the helm for IU wrestling for 26 years, even coaching Escobedo himself. 
And while the new head coach may not have too much experience on the sideline yet, he certainly has experience on the mat, earning three All-American awards during his time here at IU. I think he's done a great job of just helping uh, every athlete understand the importance of actually growing and learning and, and not focusing so much on the wins and the losses. Uh, rather, he, he focuses more on effort and attitude and, and doing the right things uh, daily. And the daily effort from the staff is making success more obtainable for Martin and the Hoosiers. It's pretty easy when you got such a good coaching staff and uh, a good group of seniors that all work hard and care about uh, uh, the program and, and getting better every day. Although the buck doesn't stop there as Escobedo and Martin are not only looking to fulfill wishes in the present, but those in the future as well. We want to have uh, Wilkeson Hall be one of the toughest arenas to compete in for wrestling. So um, that's, what, that's our job as coaches, to go out there and advocate for people to come out there and watch. Uh, as a team, we want to be uh, a much better team in March than we are right now. So just progress, uh, get the most out of ourselves. Personally, I want to get on the podium. I think that's a, a realistic goal. Uh, when kids think of Indiana, they think of the singlet. And they think of what we bring to the table, how hard we compete, our attitude and our effort. And so I think that's all comes together with that singlet. And you know, we're just really excited to go out there and build our brand. So while Wilkinson Hall may be putting on the finishing touches, Coach Escobedo and the Indiana wrestling staff have only just begun in laying a foundation. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Michael Tilka. Hoosiers will return to the mat this Saturday in the Navy Classic. The IU football team have some tough competition coming up this weekend. Our football reporter Joe Cantor tells us more. It's been 31 years since Indiana last beat Michigan. 1987 was the year, and since then, the last 22 meetings have gone in favor of the Wolverines. The matchups, however, have been close. The last three matchups have been decided by 10 points or less. And in last year's battle, IU finished just an onside kick and a score away. Maybe, just maybe, giving Hoosier fans hope for this year's game against the number four team in the country. Anxious for our guys to respond in, in the right way, to be able to build off of this and, and take momentum into a, um, the biggest game of our season, which is our next game against the Michigan Wolverines. And it's the biggest one because it is the next one. And our guys understand that, and we'll introduce them tomorrow to our team and, and go through the process of uh, taking on a very, very good football team in, uh, in Ann Arbor, Michigan, with a 4 o'clock kickoff. So um, we know what uh, they've accomplished this year. They're really uh, playing at a high level, and uh, Coach Harbaugh's got them doing a lot of great things. When the Hoosiers travel to Ann Arbor, they'll be met by the nation's top defense. Since losing week one, the Wolverines have looked as dominant as any team in the country. Their edge rushing attack is fierce behind Karen Higdon, and quarterback Shea Patterson. Higdon exploded, scoring three touchdowns and eclipsing 200 yards on the ground in last year's contest. And with an improved signal caller, Michigan looks to be even stronger than last season. For Indiana, the keys to keeping pace with the Wolverines will be explosiveness on both sides of the ball. The downfield passing game will need to get going to stretch the defense and help establish the run. IE rushed for only 80 yards last year, on defense, the team has been good about generating turnovers. This will be pivotal against a team like Michigan that dominates time of possession and whose defense keeps even its strongest opponents off the field with regularity. IU will look for a breakthrough win against the number four ranked Wolverines up in the big house on Saturday. You can catch the game at 4 p.m. on FS1. Reporting for IUS TV Sports, I'm Joe Canner. You can stay up to date on scores and news throughout the game by following us on Twitter at IUSTV Sports. The Indiana wrestling team came out on top against SIU Edwardsville 21-15 last week. Elijah Oliver got the day started off a high note for the Hoosiers, defeating his opponent by a 6-4 decision. Junior Garrett Peppel pinned his opponent in the next duel, and freshman Paul Conrath stayed hot to start his season with a pin of his own. Conrath starts his collegiate career 2-0 in duels. The next two Hoosiers fell to their competitors before IU's Bryce Martin and Dylan Hoey, IU back on the board. SIU Edwardsville made it interesting as they were defeated the next three Hoosiers via decision. But it was too little too late as IU escaped with a 21-15 victory. As we said earlier, the Hoosiers would travel 650 miles to Annapolis, Maryland this weekend as they compete in the Navy Classic. For head coach Steve Aird to rebuild the Indiana Hoosiers volleyball program, it starts with recruiting. 
Wednesday, November 14th was National Signing Day and aired landed a huge headline signee in Emily Fitzner, the number 12 overall player in the nation and sister of IU basketball star Evan Fitzner. While Aird wasn't able to fully comment yet on Fitzner and other signees as paperwork had yet to be fully processed, the Hoosiers head man is very excited about his incoming freshman class. Honestly, not that crazy. Um, we, we, we've brought in pieces that we're super excited about for obvious reasons, and I know I can't comment on, uh, on everything until the paperwork gets signed and gets sent back, but... You know, if people if people go on social media and take a peek at some things that are going on, I think it's uh, we had a huge huge day yesterday uh, for the program. Uh, it's something that we're obviously really excited about, and uh, when I'm able to comment more on those things, I will. Fitzner is one member of a freshman class expected to be in the double digits. Steve Aird had talked about bringing depth to his team, and with this incoming class, that seems to be on the horizon. Yet still, this 2018 IU team is still in NCAA tournament contention, and a win over Iowa on Friday, November 16th, would help the team take a huge step towards postseason play for the first time since 2010. Another meet, another sweep, as the number three ranked IU men's swim and dive team and the number six ranked women's team is doing more than keeping their head above water in competitions this season. They helped the Big Ten sweep the ACC in the inaugural meet that was held in West Lafayette this past Sunday as the men's team saw victories from Mohamed Sami in the 200 freestyle and Ian Finnerty in the 100 breaststroke. A dominant group effort by the men's 800 freestyle relay team that also resulted in a first place finish for the Hoosiers. And it didn't stop with the men's team. Nope, the women's team also emerged victorious this past weekend as Lily King earned a first place finish in both the 100 breaststroke and the 800 freestyle relay, while Bailey Anderson took first place in the 400 individual medley and recorded the fastest time in the nation for that event this season. Both Hoosier swim and dive teams look to continue their success this weekend in Bloomington after their three-day IU Invitational. Be sure to catch all the action by following us on Twitter at IUSTV Sports. Well, that will do it for our show. But as always, thanks everyone for getting your IU Sports updates with Hoosier Sports Night. And don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything here at IUSTV Sports on social media. Like our page, IUSTV Sports on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter at IUSTV Sports. For Meredith Strewing, I'm Griffin Gonzalez. We'll see you next week.